We've all heard the story. The story of the emperor and his new clothes. Started off simple enough. He just wanted to get himself a fine new outfit. He liked clothes. And it was going to be so great. He would hire the best tailor, and he was going to look so good, he'd throw a parade so everybody could come and see. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But as we well know, there was a problem. And that problem came with his deep-seated ego attachment to that idea. It put blinders on him, so it was the only thing he could see. That left him ripe for exploitation, which is exactly what happened. Because along came the tailor, and he managed to tap into that ego attachment, and he sold him a very expensive, invisible outfit. But again, the, the emperor was blind to what was the obvious. So he put that outfit on, and he went on the parade. And he's going along, going along in that parade, and it wasn't until the moment that someone in the audience, in this case it was a child, a child who didn't have any preconceived ideas, so therefore he wasn't wearing any blinders, he was able to see the obvious, and he said so. He pointed out to everyone, guys, um, he's not wearing anything, and bam, then the blinders came off. How embarrassing. But of course, he did a lot worse than just embarrass himself. Because remember, that was an expensive, invisible outfit. He taxed his people in excess to pay for it. He didn't set out to do harm. He didn't mean to harm anyone. But he did indeed do harm, simply because he wasn't open to new ideas. We come to events like this specifically because we want new ideas. We know we could encounter something here today that could change our lives forever, for the better, and that is extraordinary. But how ready are we, any one of us, at any moment in our day-to-day -day lives? Because there is a built-in problem. We have to rely on our ideas. We have a pretty good idea how to do our job or drive our car. We have a pretty good idea how to grocery shop. If we questioned every single little nuance of every single idea, we wouldn't be able to function. But there's something more insidious than that. And that is, when we're attached to our ideas, we get a nice little reward. We get to feel safe, and we get to feel right. That's kind of nice. Well, a new understanding of this came home to me not too long ago in a way I never would have anticipated. You see, my husband and I have been married a long time. We actually get along. We're BFFs. And we're doing the happily ever after thing. We're cruising along in life, minding our own beeswax. And then he got a diagnosis of stage four cancer. We had ideas about cancer before the diagnosis. We ate really healthy. We were reasonably active, pretty low stress. He didn't have any really bad habits that would raise any red flags. In the pantheon of things to worry about, Cancer wasn't real high on our list. And we had ideas after the diagnosis as well. More ideas about nutrition and health, and ideas about treatment. And now we had to figure out what to do. Because what they say is true. Cancer sucks. And it is scary. It is so scary. And it's not just scary for the person it's happening to, because they don't live in a bubble. It's scary for everyone who loves them, everyone who cares about them, everyone in their family, every one of their friends, everyone who works with them, everyone who's mortal. So you remember how I said that our ideas, our attachment to our ideas can make us feel safe? Well, hold on to that, because there was a little something I learned, a little something I did not know. It turns out there are a fair number of people who know the cure to cancer, usually with one simple household ingredient. You know how they know? They saw it on the internet. Now, I'm not actually talking about whether they were right or whether they were wrong, whether they had any valid points or not. What I am talking about is where the problem comes in. It's the same with that emperor. It's that deep-seated ego attachment to that idea. Because they were scared, and they wanted to feel safe. And in order to feel safe, they had to believe in these ideas. They had to be right. And you know what? When you have to be right, there's a reasonably good chance someone else has to be wrong. And yeah, 
Yeah, they let us know it. He had cancer because of something he didn't eat enough of, or something he ate too much of, or something he did in his past, or something he didn't do enough of. The point is, it was a little bit on him. And they didn't have cancer because they were too savvy to get it. Now, you can see, first of all, that's dangerous thinking, but that's emperor thinking. I am talking about people who intended to be helpful. Their intention was to help us, but instead, because of that ego attachment to that idea, what, it ha what happened was they tried to micromanage us in order for them to feel a little bit safer. And again, this is people who intended to help us. But fear not, because we know a lot of people. And we know a lot more people who are far more like the child. And you know how it is. You know when you are down. There are so many people that will help you. And I could stand up here all day and talk about amazing people that really made a difference in our lives. But they won't let me have the stage all day. So I'm going to give you one brief shining example of some of my friends who weren't like the emperor. They were much more like the child. They didn't think they already knew everything. And therefore, they weren't wearing blinders. And they were able to make a difference. So the example I'm thinking of, it happened when we were heading into the worst part of the treatments. And again, cancer sucks, and the treatments suck. And my husband had gone from living his day-to-day -day life to, at that point, pretty much living in his recliner. And then the, rec the recliner broke. I didn't need somebody to tell me what to do. I knew the solution to this problem. But I did need a friend because I was upset. I wanted to complain. So that's what I did. I complained to my friends. They knew that's what I wanted. They listened to me. But they also, because they weren't wearing blinders, were able to see a very obvious problem. And that is that something that normally would be a minor inconvenience at any other time, at this stage of the game, was kind of a big deal. So you know what they did? So they went out and found a new recliner. They didn't even presume at this point. They asked us if this was OK. And it was OK. They bought the recliner. They brought it to our house. They set it up in the living room. They took away the old recliner. They solved the problem for us. When we were at a moment in our lives where we were in a sea of problems, they just took one of those problems away. And then you know what they said? They said it was no big deal. It was a big deal. <laughs> because they weren't wearing blinders. They were able to see the obvious and make a difference. At this point, I do want to digress for a minute, because I can tell that you are lovely people and you're going to care. It has been a year and a half since my husband's last treatment, and he has recovered from those treatments. He's back to work, he's feeling good, and here's the cherry on top. There's no sign of the tumor that caused that diagnosis. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That is how I feel. And the obvious takeaway from all of this is his health. He gets to be better, and we get more happily ever after. But life has a way of giving you little lessons along the journey, whether you feel like it or not. So here's my secondary takeaway. This is what I want to know. When am I being more like the emperor and when am I being more like the child? It turns out it's fairly easy to know. We do need some introspection. and We do need to be honest with ourselves. But we can simply ask, am I hearing? Am I listening and paying attention more than I'm telling? Because new ideas and new understanding tend to come better this way than this way. And what if more of us were open to the idea that we need new ideas? We can't solve our problems by doing the exact same things that got us into them in the first place. We need new ideas. And when we're doing this more than this, we're able to start to understand each other. We can understand people of different cultures, different religions, different backgrounds, different ideas and belief systems, different politics. We need new ideas, because it is never, ever 
us and them. It is always only ever just us. So I propose this, that instead of holding on so tightly to our own emperor's garments, which we know are nothing more than our imagination anyway, what if we open up to the idea that we need new ideas? And this is the question I believe we should be asking, and this is the question that I will endeavor to ask from here on out. What are you saying that I'm not hearing? Because when our friends are talking, they just want to be heard. When protesters are demonstrating, they want to be heard. Politicians want to be heard. We don't have to agree. We don't have to condone. But what if we understood each other? Because then we could really be open to new ideas. We could be ready to take off those blinders and see the ideas that might be right in front of us at this very moment. So imagine this. Imagine a new kind of emperor, one who isn't stuck in his ideas, but he's open to new ideas. This is a man who could look out into his kingdom and see what his people really need. Is there suffering? Is there hunger? Is there want? He could see it. And he might not have all of the perfect ideas, but he certainly would be in a better position to come up with them, and he'd be in a better position to hear those people around him. And who knows where that ripple effect might end. Because when he was <laughs> stuck in his ego ideas, it was all about him. But when he opened up to new ideas, this is a man who could change the world. And when we open up to new ideas, we can remove our blinders, and we could change the world too. So what do you say, my friends? Let's go change the world.